Hey, this is Carrie with Canary Quilts, and we are on week 10 of our Dear Jane Quilt Along in 2024. And if you're new here, um, we are doing the Dear Jane Quilt Along. I am using EQ8 with the Dear Jane add-on. I have links to both of those down below. Um, there is a book, a 25th anniversary book, that from my understanding follows the EQ8 Dear Jane add-on. And um, there's a book that Brenda Papadakis did 25 years ago. So you can build this from those books. I don't have those books, um, but I do have them linked down below if you want to check them out. So if you want to join us and you're new here, hit the subscribe button notification bell and you'll get notified every time we put out new content. Also, a little more business to put out. If you want, if you don't want to watch my EQ8 introduction stuff here you there are time codes down below for the constructions of the block and you can go directly to the blocks so let's get started with week 10 i am using some red batiks this week and so my blocks are going to be red i'm in my color my block color chart in the eq8 add-on let's go all the way to the end to the red blocks and start putting them in. So we are working on G1. Let's see, that in variation two is the one I'm using. Um, it is an applique variation, that's why I chose it. Um, you can check out the other one, see if the, that's the way you wanna do them. So G1 is right here. Now we've got L9 Walter's Place, and there are a couple variations on this too. This is a foundation paper piece that I think looks up my alley to put together. So, you know, you can check out the other variations, see if those paper pieces suit um, the way you work. All right, L9, right there. Now we have L13, Harvest Moon Variation 1. The variation that is on this one is also an applique. So they have a couple different ways to put this, so you can check them out. I think there's a second variation and um, just the center block, but I'm choosing variation one, an applique. And that was L13. K4, Thea's turn. And I don't, I don't think there was a variation on this, but you can check it out. But this is pretty straightforward here to put together. So that was K4. Did I get, yep, I got that in the right spot. And then uh, top row 10 is right there. So we are getting this filled in really nicely. Um, let's go over the block work table real quick. Um, I'll run through these. If I um, see anything, I'll let you know um, on the variations. So let's head to the block work table. All right, here is G1 variation two, and you can see that it's basically got an hourglass background um, with this shape on top. And if we go to draw, you can see that the shape is applique. So you can either print it out as foundation and you can do the two sides like that, or you can go to rotary cutting and put together your hourglass that way, um, or you can do templates. So we do need the templates for our center pieces here, and um, we can print those out and get them cut in the correct color and put this block together, it shouldn't be too hard. All right, here's L9. This is a pretty straightforward foundation paper piece. It's just gonna have a lot of sections that you can see here, um, but it's gonna be pretty easy to paper piece and put these together. I think with all these seams, paper piece is the way to go to keep this a nice straight block. So that's how I'm doing this one. Um, the other ones have slightly different shapes or widths to some of the pieces, but I think for the most part, it's the same type of foundation paper piecing. So this one isn't gonna to be too hard. All right, we're on L13. You can see that we've got the circle that has two different colors and then the inner circle has two different colors. If we go to draw, you can see that this variation, which is variation one, has applique. 
and you can print out the templates for these different shapes and just cut them out onto the correct or put them on the correct colors and then lay them out on your block and then the background is just a five inch square so if we just go to templates you can see that we've got all our templates that we need here all right, that one's going to be pretty easy to do. All right, I think in the introduction I said that K4 didn't have any variations. It does have variations. It has a variation, I should say. Um, it has, let's see, the difference is right here. It has this white strip right here, and it also has this border. Um, the one in, that's listed just under the center blocks doesn't have that strip and it doesn't have the border. So when you look at Jane Stickle's uh, quilt and you look at this block, this is what the block looks like. So I had the wrong block in my sketchbook. This is the block I, I personally actually want to do because it's the one that looks like Jane Stickle and I don't think it'll be too hard to put together like this. So, sorry about that. This is variation one on K4 that I'm going to be doing. And foundation wise, not too hard. You got a center block and then you can put that onto it. And then you just have three um, sections that are the same. So, I don't think it's going to be too hard to put together, but it, it is the variation. And I think in my introduction, I said there weren't any variations. So, sorry about that. Um, you can choose which one you want to do. I have pulled up week 10 or top row 10 block and this is what it's going to look like and it's going to be in my color red. What I want to show is that I resectioned this. I took a picture of what on the right here of what EQ8 actually had it sectioned as and then I resectioned it. I want to show you the difference. So the biggest difference here is, let me circle it, right here. These are all separate sections. These are not. So I'm putting these three together in a section. And then right here, we'll have a tiny little Y seam, not much of a Y seam to put together. So instead of having like all these little Y seams that we have to work on, we will only have this little Y seam. So that's what I've done is resectioned it. Um, if you want to just take a look at how I did it or um, take a screenshot of this, maybe picture, you can resection it the same. Um, and EQ8 numbered it for the most part for me. It gets pretty hectic up here. Um, so I didn't really renumber anything other than I, it did number these for me. So that's what I did. Um, and my resectioning, it's all the same except for that part over here where there's just three pieces. I made them all a section and then we'll have a little Y seam in the middle. So. That's what I did with that. Just wanted to let you know. Um, if you, I'll list, a, I'll put a video down below of how I went in and resectioned and renumbered something in a previous video, and you can reference that. Um, but I just wanted to let you know if you want to resection yours too, that's what it'll look like when it's resectioned, is like this. That'll be interesting to put together. But um, I know that right here we have a singular piece, but what we can do is we can add it to these three sections. And then these three, these um, two sections will get put together. And then we can add these two sections together and then put it all together. So I think it's going to be, it'll be a little challenging, but I hope that I made it a little easier on myself by doing that. So I don't know. We'll see when I get there. Anyway, let's get started on our blocks and um, shouldn't take too long. It'll be fun this week. All right, let's get started working on week 10 of our Dear Jane Quilt Along. And I have already gone ahead and cut all my pieces for each one of my blocks, um, put them in a bag with my pattern. 
so that I can just grab these and start working on them. So what I was doing before was I would cut the cut it right before I'd make it. This time I'm cutting it and then I don't have to keep all my fabrics around. I can put them away and just have these bags to pull from um, when I'm ready to work on my block. Um, I'm going to start with the two blocks that we are going to be appliquing this week. So I've got my fusible. My I'm using Steam -a Seam Light 2 or Light Steam -a Seam 2 I think it's called. Um, and uh, I'm ready to go with those. I'm going to do those two at the same time is what I'm trying to say. So um, there really won't be much sewing on this, but we do have a little bit of sewing. But anyway, the two that we're going to be working on at the same time is L13 Harvest Moon and G1 Hen House, Hattie's Hen House Variation 2. So this Hattie's Hen House is the one where we will be making the background because it's going to be like two, I'm using red, it'll be two reds and two whites on the background. So I will have to sew those together. So let me get set up with um, getting my everything traced onto my light steam seam two, and then we'll get ready to make these blocks. And I'll show you what pieces I have. All right, here are my pieces for each of my applique blocks. For L13 Harvest Moon, I have a background square, which I've cut, and then I'm gonna need two of the red and two red of the outer ring. This is the inner circle, this is the outer ring. I am not going to applique white on white. Um, I'm just going to put the red on. So that's all I need for this. I've got these ready to be cut out. And then for G1 Hattie's Hen House, this is going to be my background square. You can use the template or I cut a four inch square out and then cut it on the diagonal. So I just need to sew these together like this so that my, the same colors are pointing towards each other. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get this sewn together. I'm gonna get my appliques cut out and then we'll put our pieces on. All right, I built my background and I ironed towards the dark pieces and then when I put my two rows together, it nested seams there and then I ironed it open. I've cut my appliques out and they're gonna go just like this with opposite colors and you're gonna put the point right there in the center with all these pieces so they line up and then we can get that ironed down. So that one's pretty easy, that one will be done. This one, I took my background piece and I folded it twice and creased it. So there's the center we need to take our half circles, quarter circles, line them up like this in the center. Actually, let's fold these. So that way when I put them down, I'll know where to put them. Just like that, facing each other. And then these pieces are gonna go up here in between and we want this corner to land at that point and this corner to land at that point and then we're gonna do the same thing down here. So that's how we want it to go together. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get peeled off. I'm gonna get them laid down and then we can iron them on. All right, there we go. Let's see, G1 Hat Hattie's Hen House and I did variation two and then L13 Harvest Moon is variation one. So not too hard to put together and uh, I should have thrown the blocks up and you can see what they're supposed to look like or according to Jane Stickle, what they look like and what mine look like with my red batiks. All right, we are two down already. All right, next we're working on K4 Theus Turn and I chose variation one here. It has these little white strips and it looks like Jane Stickles was like that too. That's why I chose variation one. If you don't choose variation one, this is what it's gonna look like. It's totally up to you which one you choose. All right, so what I have here for my, for my white pieces are 
These long strips are for these outer pieces. These short strips are these tiny little white strips in here. And then the triangles go in here also for the white. The red, this big one is for the center. These triangles are for the middle triangles. These squares are actually for these out here, which I will cut from. Once I start working with these pieces, I'll cut them out of this. So let me, let's see. Let's do this middle big piece because it has one of these pieces on it, which is the same as that. And then I'll put the center together and show you how I'm doing these right here, um, these corners. Okay, here's the piece I'm gonna work on. This is our first piece, this is A1, and then A2, A3, A4, A5. I've drawn it out on the other side, so we need one of these tiny little rectangles. And I'm just gonna cover that um, first piece right here and go a quarter of an inch into number two. And then I'm going to need a triangle for number two. And I'm going to line my points up. These are obviously big enough. And I'm gonna sew on this line in between A1 and A2. There's my first two pieces and I need to put A3 on. I have already gone ahead and trimmed it along the line between two and three and now I need a white triangle that needs to be oriented like this. So we'll flip it over and we want to make sure we have coverage here on the outside of this line. And then we want to sew from here out to there between A2 and A3. All right, there's my A3 piece. I have already gone ahead and trimmed for my fourth piece, which is gonna go on exactly the same way as three, oriented like that, flip it over, make sure we have coverage out here on that seam allowance line. And then sew between A3, or A2 and A4. All right, there's my a4 piece and so the rest of these are going to be put together just like I did here. The only difference is now we're going to add this big center piece and we just need to make sure I've already gone ahead and trimmed it my quarter inch seam allowance. We just need to make sure we have coverage out here. So I'm going to get this put on. I'm going to finish my other pieces here and then we'll put that together. The center piece. All right before we put together this center I want to show you what I've been doing lately is taking these pieces that are singular instead of cutting them out as templates I'm sewing the fabric just inside this seam allowance to hold it onto my piece of paper and I did that for these corners and I did that for these edges you can see right here I've done it I find that works really well I can still paper piece and keep my pieces intact so I then trimmed on the part that I'm going to be sewing uh, same over here, trimmed on the bottom and the sides. All right, next we need to put this together and we already have this one on, that's the one we made. So we need to put this side on and I've cut it out with the notches and with the red, you can really see it well, how these notch ends line up with the side of my fabric. So we'll get this sewn on. I'm gonna iron these seams open and then we'll come back and put the other two sides on. All right, I sewed this side on, but I actually, um, this side is actually ironed towards the red piece. So when I put this side on, I ironed it towards the red piece. I did not iron it open. So we're gonna take these pieces and line them up. And with the notches, you can see that these notches now line up with the edges of our fabric. So. I will iron these also towards the red piece, both of these pieces. All right, now we need to put our red triangles on. They're gonna go on these straight edge sides right here. I went ahead and trimmed the notches. So when we put it on, whoops, we gotta put fabric to fabric. The notches will line up with the edge right here. So I'm gonna sew on the seam line and I'm going to iron towards the red 
triangle. And I'm gonna get all four of these on. All right, there's my corners on. I wanna trim them up all the way around so we can add our white pieces. All right, I got all four of my corners, red corners on, and then I went ahead and trimmed out. And now I'm going to add on my strips, but it's a little different here where we have a short strip we're gonna put on, and then we have two medium strips we're gonna put on, on the side, and then we'll put our long strip on. So I've already attached the short one. I'm gonna to iron towards the outer strip, and then I'll add these two and add that one and do the same thing. All right, there's K4 Thea's turn. Variation one, and variation one has this little white strip right here, so it looks like this red triangle is floating. All right, that was fun. That was fun to put together. All right, let's work on L9 Walter's Place. This isn't gonna be too hard. It's just got, you know, it's just gonna be a little bit of work. This is what we're going for right here. What I have are some white squares that are in here, some white triangles that go out here, and then all of these red rectangles, I'm gonna use the same size for all of the rectangles you see here, and then one square for the middle. Um, I'm gonna put together one of these and one of these. That's representative of everything in here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do what I've been doing and just putting, um, putting I'll put my triangles onto my templates here and then sew inside the um, seam allowance to keep them attached. All right, let's get ready. All right, I've got all my pieces cut out. I went ahead and sewed my singular pieces to their respective paper pieces. Cut them out. Now I'm going to do these two pieces there because they're exactly like all the other pieces we have to do. Not too hard here. I've got them drawn on the back and the edges are basically the edge of my piece here or section if that's what you want to call it. And I've got C1 which is red, C2 which is white, C3 which is red. So I only need my square, my white squares and my red rectangles. So let's just put this on so that we have a quarter of an inch coverage between C1 and C2 and we have coverage here also. And then I'm going to take my white square and make sure that I have quarter of inch coverage right here also. And I'm off the paper here, so we've got plenty of coverage. I am going to sew on the line between C1 and C2, and then trim up my piece down here to get ready for C3. All right, so I think when I was showing you the pieces, I said the triangles were for this. They weren't, they were for this outer piece. The squares, I just cut squares. Those are for the triangles inside these pieces. So while I'm waiting for my iron to heat up, I have drawn this out. The edges of the paper are basically my section. Our number one pieces are white, two is red. I'm just gonna take my square, line it up with, um, so there's a quarter of an inch over my line between the two pieces and I'm off the paper. And then I'm gonna take my rectangle, whoops, I only need one and line it up with my white piece. That obviously goes off the edges, so we've got plenty of coverage. And then I'm just gonna sew on the line in between the two fabrics there. All right, there's the two fabric section. And um, that's done, and all I'll do is trim around the edges. And then this one still needs the third piece. I've trimmed my quarter inch seam allowance, so we'll just line this up so that my fabric is basically off the paper which means we'll have plenty of coverage. So now we can sew on the line between C1, C2, and C3. All right, so this is kind of puzzly, but the first thing we need to do is take one of our square units and one of our weird shaped units, and we need to sew them together along the edge that they match on right here, but you're always gonna do it on the side of our square unit that has the seam right here. See that? Seam, 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 or seam. So that's what I'm gonna do first, and then we can start to figure out how to put these four pieces onto the center square. So that's how we're gonna lay it out first. 
So if you take these away, all four of these pieces are going to look the same. It's another way to look at it. There we go. See, all four of these pieces look exactly the same. So let's get these four pieces put together and let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's iron this towards the triangular shaped one. All right, I have my pieces done here and what's gonna happen is we are going to sew this square onto the bottom of this one and then this will fit and then this will fit here but we will have to do a y seam here and that's a nice right angle y seam so that won't be too hard to do so first off i am going to turn this over i'm going to line it up on the corners and i'm going to sew right along here and i'm going to stop right there and put a lock stitch in there. I am not going to go all the way through the seam allowance so that when we turn it that will be open for us. All right that's what this piece looks like now so now this will fit and all we have to do is line up seams right here and edges. I'm going to sew that on and I'm going to iron that seam open. Oh you can see that I left that unsewn right there so that when we turn it we have room to move. So I'm going to get this piece sewn on. I'm going to iron it open. I'm going to get that piece sewn on. I'm going to iron that open and then we'll work on this last piece. All right, here's all the three pieces put on around that square. You can see right here we've got it open. We want to add this piece. So I'm going to line up the edge over here. And what we want to do is we want to sew along this but stop at this point and keep this pulled back so that you don't sew into it. So sew along here and stop at that point. All right, got it sewn on. I sewn to this point. I put a lock stitch there. What I want to do is I want to iron away from the piece I just put on so that when we turn it over the seam, this is the seam I just sewn, will lay flat. And then we can line up these edges and sew from this corner right here on out to the edge. So iron away from this piece we just put on. Just turn, make that right angle turn. So from this point on out. We can do this people, we can do this. All right, we did it. Look at that. Turned out great. So now we're going to take our um, corners and we're going to put them along these red strips here. And I've cut the notches out so those notches line up perfectly with the edge right here. I'm going to sew along this and I'm going to iron towards the corner. All right, there's Walter's place. That was a little bit of a thinker. Um, not too hard till we had to start assembling the block, but um, it's a really pretty block. I like it. All right, we can get started on TR10 Precious Gems. And this is what it's going to look like. I don't think it's going to be too hard to put together. I've got pieces here. They kind of go all over the place. So... You can grab my cut pieces on my website, which is at the link down below, and I will have that down there instead of like going through this. Where all these go, they like the little pieces I'm pretty sure go up here. Um, there's just a lot of different cut pieces here, so um, I'm not going to go through them. I think you can see my notes here. I do know where they go, but my notes are they're just kind of all over the place. Anyway, whew, goodness, what should I do here? Maybe I'll do this piece, this piece, and this tiny little piece and see how that goes. And then we'll put the whole block together. I think that will be pretty representative of everything that's going on in here. All right, so these are the three pieces I'm going to do, demonstrate. 
I have my other pieces over here and then I've taken these singular pieces and attached them to their paper pieces with in, within the seam line so that they stay together. I've also pulled out the cut pieces that I need for this one. I used my notes. I had to look over at my notes to see which pieces go where. So these two squares are for these two pieces. The white square is for that one. The two triangles go over here and this is for the end piece. So we're starting over here with the two triangles. I am just going to put them together and then we'll get this turned over and I'll show you how they fit. All right, here it is turned over. Let's get our seam lines in there. I actually went and cut the shape out so that when I put my pieces down, I, I know the edges are out here. So we're starting over here with the triangles and this is number one and I put an R for red that's the color I'm using and then two is a white and then three red four white five red six white but what I'm going to do is just I have these two together and the red is number one so I'm going to lay them both down so that the red is on the red one is on the bottom because that's my first piece make sure I've got a quarter of an inch coverage over my seam line right here and I've got coverage outside of my paper so that um, I have coverage there also. So we're going to sew from here to here. And don't forget lock stitches at the seam intersections. All right, there's my first two pieces. I went ahead and trimmed my quarter inch seam allowance. So now I'm on piece three. That says it's a red, so I'm going to take one of my red squares. I'm going to line it up on my seam allowance, make sure basically that I'm off the paper, which gives me coverage, and then sew right here along this line. All right, there's my third piece. I've gone ahead and trimmed my quarter inch seam allowance, so now I'm going to add my white square, and so I'm going to do the same thing right on through six here with the pieces I have left. Each one of these is going to be exactly the same as this one. All right, here's my first piece. Um, not too hard to put together once you start going with these squares and rectangles. And um, that's what it looks like. So I'm ready to do my next piece. And again, I cut around the shape with the paper so that I know where the um, seam allowances basically come out to. Then I drew it on the back, my seam lines. And this is where I'm gonna start, is in the corner with a red piece. Then go to a white triangle, red triangle, um, a white rectangle, and a white rectangle. So here's my two triangles. This is where I'm going to start with this square, and then these two rectangles are going to go in the corners. So let's put our first um, square down, and I want to make sure I have coverage on this side, at least a quarter of an inch, and a quarter of an inch into my second line. I've got coverage on the outside of the paper, so it's looking good my triangle we want to orient it that way when it's um good to go and so let's turn it over i am going to make sure and this is my seam line but it's outside the or my um, seam allowance it's outside the paper and it's way over the line over here so it's looking good there so i am going to sew on the line in between one and two right here lock stitch at intersections. There's my first two pieces. Pull it back. We need our red triangle that's going to go here. It needs to be oriented like that. I have already trimmed my quarter of an inch. So I'm just going to lay this down. It's plenty big. Um, I'm just going to line it up with my edges, my corners over here and my points line up and then we will sew in between here lock stitching at intersections. Okay, there's my first three pieces. I have trimmed my seam allowance to piece four. So piece four is just going to go on there like this. And my seam allowance comes out to here and here. So we're looking good here. I'm going to sew this on between E3 and E4. Come all the way across. And then E5 is going to go on the same. We'll just trim here. It'll go on this way and we'll be done with this corner. Okay, here's this piece put together. Eight, um, E4, E5, pretty much the same, just 
yeah, they're even oriented in the same way, I guess. So that's done. Now let's do this tiny little piece. I've cut it around the edges like the seam allowance. Um, I've marked the seams on the other side. So I have my first piece is going to be a red. Second is red. Oops. First is white. I have three white pieces in a red. So one is white, two is red, three is white, four is white. So I have a white square to start with. I have a red square for the next one. And then I have these even smaller squares for three and four. So I need the two bigger squares for the first one. I'm going to put those together. And the white one is number one. So that's going on the bottom. And then I'm going to lay it over quarter of an inch over the second seam or the seam that we between one and two right here and I have coverage everywhere so we need to sew from here across we can sew across here lock stitch at intersections all right here's my first two pieces put on obviously they are plenty big I want to come over here this little tiny piece is H3. So let's go over to the line. Let's pull it up and we can trim. Well, look out, Mr. Jingles. People have to see what to do. So now I'm going to take my smaller squares. You can barely see it, but it needs to cover this area right here. So. I'm going to put my square on so that I have plenty of coverage here and obviously I have coverage over there. So we're going to sew right here and lock stitch over here. All right, there's our three pieces. <clears throat> Next, let's um, just go between three and four here and get that trimmed up so that we can put our next small piece on. All right, I have my other small. It is getting hard to see. We have to do coverage in here. So line up your square so that it lands outside our coverage area. You can see the corners there, the corners there. We can sew right here between three, four, and two. All right, there's my third piece with the little tiny pieces. It does go together. It's just a little bit more. It's just a little bit more to hold these tiny little pieces. But I'm going to finish up the rest of these and we will start assembling this little puzzle piece. Remember, this is what we're going for. All right, I laid out my pieces here. So it basically goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I. And the way these pieces are going to go together is like this. These three, these four pieces will go together. So first we'll put these three together and then this one will go right here. Next we'll put these two together and then this one will fit right here. We put these two together and there's a slight Y seam right here. And then we'll put these sections all together for the entire block. But first, let's put these parts together. So let's start with the easy one. Let's just go down here. We want to put these together. We want a checkerboard look. You can see over here we want a checkerboard look. So you know that you're going to be lining up red and white. And it's hard to see, but once you get it sewn, it will make a straight line across the bottom. But anyway, I am going to literally nest these seams right here. I'm going to butt those two red seams up together and then everything should fit. And it does. You can see right here the notches fit right there and the edge fits over here. So I think what I'll do is iron my seams open here. 
Okay, there's my first two sections put together. Now I'm going to put these together. Again, nest those seams. And then everything else should line up. And it does. Everything lines up. So I am going to sew these together and iron it open. All right. There's the first three sections put together. Now let's take our um, G piece, which is just a singular piece. We want to line it up from edge to edge. Line up the corner here. And you can see that my corner ends at the um, fabric there. So I'm going to iron this seam. I'm going to iron this towards G, this little piece. All right. Here's the first section finished. I ironed towards that piece. I went ahead and put these pieces together the way I put these together, but I ironed towards the E piece because it's an edge right here and I just want to have all my seams coming out to the edge. So what we need to do now is take, this is our F I believe, yep, our F piece. We need to line it up in the corner right here and we will have a tail on this side. We will because we will be tying our eye piece in here. Um, it's gonna cut, we've got another eye seam, eye seam, another Y seam right here. So you will have a tail over here. All right. I am only gonna sew up to this point right here in preparation of what we're gonna have to do over here. So, and I think what I want to do, I'm not real good at Y seams, but I think I want to iron away from this F piece. So that's what I'm going to do. I can always iron it a different way if I need to, but I'm going to sew along here to this point, stop, and then iron towards the bigger piece down here. All right, you can see that we have a little bit left over right there. This is where this is going to come in to play. So let's put these two pieces together. And it's really hard to see, but we do have a slight Y seam right here. So let's just put them right here. Let's put them together so that this corner lines up. Let's sew from here to that seam. Stop, needle down, and then you can just rotate your paper over and sew up this seam. All right, there's my two pieces. It really wasn't that hard to, it's it's such a slight Y seam, it wasn't that hard to move my pieces over and sew, and I'm going to just iron towards this top piece. All right, here's my three sections now that I've got to put together. This is gonna be easy, it's just one seam. This is the little Y seam we have to do right here. So we have to put these two pieces together. So I'm gonna flip them over I want to, I'm going to line it up. I can see where I have folded this seam over right here. I can see and feel that seam. And I want my point right here to land right at the edge of that seam. And I'm going to line it up and it looks like the point of this side here is landing on the edge of my upper section. So at this point, what we want to do is sew along here and stop down here, making sure we don't go into this piece here, this bottom piece. So if you have to, just kind of pull it away. But that's how I'm doing it. I'm putting this on the edge of this seam. And then you can see if I were to fold it, if I get it lined up correctly and fold it on the right line, we're going to end up with a straight line here. But we are going to have to do a little bit of sewing right here. It'll work. I'm telling you what, I do not like Y seams, but this Dear Jane um, series sure is kind of teaching me a lesson. 
All right, I'm going to bring you in real close here. I have sewn along here and I stopped right there. So you can see that's where I stopped. So now we need to, I'm going to fold this seam back up and we need to pull this all the way around. And what you want to do is create a straight line right here. Now we want to sew from right here on out. So just this little seam right there. There we go. So <clears throat> this is where I sewed from right here on out off the paper. So now all we have to do is fold it up. And we can fold this seam how we had it ironed towards E and F. It wants to go back to E and F like this. So that's how I am going to iron this seam. And then this one is just going to go on matching seams up, just like we did before. I'm going to match seams up here, the red and the white seams. And um, I am going to iron towards this bottom piece. All right, there's our top portion put together, a little puzzly, but that was really interesting and kind of really fun. So now we just have this bottom section to put on and I'm just going to flip it over, line it up along the bottom edge. You can use the pin method in the corners if you'd like. I'm just going to make sure I have the same amount of tail on each side. And I'm going to pin this up and I'm going to sew it on and I'm going to iron towards the bottom piece. There we go, TR10 Precious Gems. Just a little bit of thinking to put this one together. Whew, got to give credit to Jane Stickle for just doing these on the fly or however she did them, sitting and designing them. Who knows? But there we go. It's pretty. All right, there we go. We have finished the blocks for week 10. Those were fun to put together. A little challenging at times, but hey, we got through it. Um, I have been asked a couple times how I'm going to be appliquing and... I'm not quite sure yet. I'll probably machine applique, but I'm just kind of holding on to it just in case I get inspired by something else. Um, but for right now, I am just leaving them like this, not doing any applique. Uh, so, blocks turned out really cool. I really like them. I'm at my favorite part now where I get to add my pictures to the quilt. There's the last one. And just see how they look once I get them added in. So if you're new here, I do have a video on how to, and you have the Dear Jane add-on, I have a video on how to add these pictures to the, um, to one of these quilts that's in here. So um, I will link a video to that below. I'll put it up right here and um, you can go to that and watch. But let's just start adding them and um, let me know how it's going for you. Are you adding pictures to your quilt in the Dear Jane EQA add-on? So let's go to G1, G, 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 G1. There we go. We've got L13 over here, K4, L9, and TR10. It is coming together. It's getting so cool to see. Um, I can't wait to see what my whole quilt's going to look like, but this is getting really exciting. So hit the subscribe button, notification bell, if you want to watch this, if you're quilting along with me, um, and you can get notified of all the new content I put out, um, check out the links down below. It really does help the channel out, and um, I really do appreciate you. I appreciate all your comments, and I appreciate watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!